The Shield is an American drama television series starring Michael Chiklis that premiered on March 12, 2002, on FX in the United States, and concluded on November 25, 2008, after seven seasons. Known for its portrayal of corrupt police officers, it was originally advertised as Rampart in reference to the True Life Rampart Division police scandal, on which the show's strike team was loosely based. The series was created by Sean Ryan and the Barn Productions for Fox Television Studios and Sony Pictures Television. Several notable film actors took extended roles on the show, including Glenn Close, who was the female lead during the fourth season, Forrest Whitaker, who guest starred in seasons five and six, Laura Haring in season five, Franca Potenta in season six, and Laurie Holden in season seven. The series has received high critical acclaim as well as several awards and nominations. It won the Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series Drama in 2002. Michael Chiklis won both the Primetime Emmy Award and Golden Globe Award for Best Lead Actor in a Drama in 2002. And the final season won a 2008 AFI Award for Best Television Series. In 2013, TV Guide ranked The Shield number 50 on its list of the 60 best series of all time. Premise the Shield is about an experimental division of the Los Angeles Police Department set up in the fictional Farmington district of Los Angeles, using a converted church as their police station, and featuring a group of detectives called the Strike Team, a former anti-gang unit based on the LAPD's real-life Rampart Division Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums Unit. Rampart was seriously considered as the series name and was even used in some early promotional ads for the series. The show has an ensemble cast and, as a result, usually runs a number of separate storylines through each episode. Detective Vic Mackey is the leader of the strike team, which also comprises Mackey's close friends Shane Vendrell, Curtis Lemansky, and Ronnie Gardocki. The strike team uses a variety of illegal and unethical methods to prosecute criminals and maintain peace on the streets, while making a profit through illegal drug protection schemes and robbery. The strike team isn't above planting drugs on and coercing confessions out of gang members or framing them. Attempts to give the team a fifth member have frequently led to near catastrophe for the group. As the series progresses, the strike team members struggle to cover up their crimes in the face of increasing pressure and scrutiny from their superiors. Other prominent figures at the barn include Captain David Aceveda, Detectives Holland, Dutch Wage and Back, Steve Billings and Claudette W.Y.M.s, and uniformed officers Sergeant. Danielle, Danny, Sofa, Julian Lowe, and Tina Hanlin. The Shield has a variety of subplots. Notably Aceveda's political aspirations and his suffering of a sexual assault, Mackey's struggle to cop with a failing marriage, two autistic children and his rebellious eldest daughter, Danny's becoming a mother, Vendril's rocky, new marriage, Lemansky's growing fear for the safety of the strike team, Claudette's battle with illness, and Lowe's internal conflicts between his belief in the teachings of the Bible and his homosexuality. Common themes are the citizens' distrust of police, the social impact of drugs and gang warfare, and the conflict between ethics and political expediency. The majority of conversations among characters on The Shield involve one person's using leverage over another, as well as people on all sides primarily looking out for their own agendas. Most characters are portrayed as displaying both vice and virtue. For example, Vic's loving relationship with his children sharply contrasts with his thuggish approach to police work. Although his brutality is generally directed at those who seem well deserving of such treatment. For example, in season 2, the strike team prepares to rob the Armenian money train, a money laundering operation of the Armenian mafia. Another example is Maki letting a serial rapist be mauled by a police dog before calling the dog off. Series Overview Season 1 Season 1 consisted of 13 episodes. 
It premiered on March 12, 2002, and concluded on June 4, 2002. David Acevedo is assigned as the new captain of the barn, in the Farmington district. One of his top priorities is to get Detective Vic Mackey, leader of the experimental anti-gang unit called the Strike Team, off the streets. Acevedo suspects Mackey is involved in corrupt, illegal activities favoring drug dealer Rondell Robinson to control local drug trade. To capture him, Acevedo asks a newly appointed member of the team, Terry Crowley, to gather evidence for Mackey's prosecution. Although reluctant, Crowley agrees, unaware that Mackey already knows about his assignment. Acevedo's long-term ambition is to become mayor of Los Angeles. To do this, he must first be elected to the city council. The Farmington district has traditionally been held by black politicians, but given the increase in the Latino population, Acevedo thinks he can pull off an upset and be elected as the district's first Latino council member. However, the Latino community is distrustful of law enforcement and would only support a police officer if he had exposed corruption in the police force. Acevedo's motives are, therefore, not completely altruistic. During a raid on the house of Two Time, Mackey uses Two Time's gun to murder Crowley, with Vendrell as his only witness. Acevedo is convinced that Mackey was responsible for Crowley's death, so he starts an internal investigation of Mackey and the strike team. Shane is guilt-ridden and struggles to come to terms with it. Meanwhile, Assistant Chief of Police Ben Gilroy tries to cover Mackey's tracks. Another subplot involves Julian Lowe, a rookie officer who is training under the experienced Danny Sofa, as he tries to settle into the job. Due to his inexperience, Lowe often makes mistakes, which causes tension with Danny. Lowe is a devout Christian and a closeted homosexual, and struggles to reconcile the two. He also witnesses a crime committed by Mackie and the strike team, which Acevedo tries to use to capture Mackie. Finally, detectives Dutch Wagenbach and Claudette W.Y.M.s try to track down an elusive serial killer whom Dutch thinks is responsible for at least four murders. While Dutch becomes obsessed with the case, Claudette frequently tries to divert his attention to their other cases. Season 2 Season 2 premiered on January 7, 2003 and concluded April 1, 2003, consisting of 13 episodes. The season mostly revolves around a brutal new drug lord, Armadillo, a sadistic child rapist who likes to set his rivals on fire using a tie necklace, and Gasoline, who begins to take over the drug trade, in Farmington. Meanwhile, Officer Sofa is involved in the shooting of a Muslim man and has to deal with the fallout. This season is also heavily concerned with the strike team's plan to rob the money train of the Armenian mob which ends up happening in the season finale. Season 3 Season 3 premiered on March 9, 2004 and concluded on June 15, 2004, consisting of 15 episodes. The season mainly revolves around the aftermath of the money train heist and its effects on the strike team. As the Armenian mob and David Acevedo begin to suspect the strike team of having carried it out, Inspired to save the team, Curtis Lemansky burns a majority of the money, ultimately leading to a confrontation which causes the strike team to split up in the season finale. The Armenian mob sends Margos Dezirian to wipe out the strike team. Dezirian leaves a trail of murders, resulting in his own execution at the hands of Mackey. Claudette is promised a promotion to captain and maintains a supervising role throughout the season, while Acevedo prepares to move on to the city council. Near the end of the season, a public defender is shot, and the ensuing investigation leads WYMs and Dutch to discover that the victim had been a heavy drug user for the past three years. WYMs explores further and becomes very unpopular with the DA, and around the barn, because she reopens the defender's lost cases. This results in her being denied the promotion to captain of the Farmington district that she had been promised. 
Season 4 Season 4 premiered on March 15, 2005 and concluded on June 14, 2005, consisting of 13 episodes. Glenn Close joined the main cast taking over the role as Farmington's new captain, Monica Rawling. The season dealt with the fallout from the strike team's disbandment. Shane Vendrell, with new partner Armando, Army, Renter, enters into a dangerous situation with major drug lord Antoine Mitchell, and seemingly accepts an order to kill Vic Mackey. The police were outraged after two officers were kidnapped and subsequently found murdered. In the end, the strike team is reformed and manages to put Antoine in prison. The season also deals with the controversial asset forfeiture policies of the new captain, Julian Lowe's opposition to these policies, and City Councilman David Acevedo's dealing with the psychological aftermath of his sexual assault incident from the previous season. The season concludes with Captain Rawlings losing her job over a dispute with the D. One of the season's secondary plots involves Claudette W.Y.M.'s and Dutch's marginalization as detectives. Because of Wim's refusal to apologize to the DA for reopening the cases of a public defender discovered to have been a functioning drug addict, Wim's moral stand resulted in many of the prosecutor's cases being overturned. This cost WYM's her shot at becoming Farmington captain. Dutch eventually resolved the situation by making a backroom deal with the DA to keep Claudette in line and do favors for the office in return for Bray aching back into action. Season 5 Season 5 premiered on January 10, 2006 and concluded on March 21, 2006, consisting of 11 episodes. The season revolves around Internal Affairs Division LT. John Cavanaugh's investigation of the strike team, representing one of the greatest threats the team has ever faced. As a result of Kavanaugh's turning one of Mackey's informants, Iada became aware of Lem's stealing heroin which he never turned in. Finding the heroin gave IAD sufficient evidence to arrest Lem, but Kavanaugh wants him to incriminate the whole strike team and has him wear a wire. Lem warns the team he is wired, and they use it to embarrass IAD. Kavanaugh, applying pressure to the team in any way he can, finds out about Mackey's share of the money train haul and ultimately arrests Lem. Having made a deal with Antoine Mitchell, a gang leader the team had put in prison, Mackey supports Lem and gets bail, while Vendrell worries Lem will give evidence against the team. WYMS finally gets her opportunity for promotion to captain of the barn, which she reluctantly accepts. The season concludes with Vendrell, fooled by Acevedo into believing Lem was going to turn on the strike team, murdering his friend and fellow team member with a hand grenade. Wins and losses, the producers of The Shield produced a 15-minute promisode, which premiered on Google on February 15, 2007, to bridge the gap between seasons 5 and 6. The episode focuses on the aftermath of Lem's death, including his funeral and flashbacks as co-workers reflect upon debt, Lemansky's life. The episode was said to have cost between $500,000 and $1 million to produce. It was on Bud.TV four weeks and later released to AOL and other media outlets. The Promisode is also one of the special features included on the Season 5 DVD set. Season 6 Season 6 premiered on April 3, 2007 and concluded on June 5, 2007, consisting of 10 episodes. Continuing directly after Season 5, Mackie and the strike team are distraught over Lem's death. Vendrell, overcome by guilt, becomes reckless and suicidal. Kavanaugh refuses to let the case die and resorts to Mackey's tactics of planting evidence and coercing witnesses to lie about the strike team, especially Mackey. Dutch and WYMs begin to suspect Kavanaugh's integrity. Kavanaugh finally confesses to his actions and finds himself under arrest. Mackey learns from WYMs that the chief plans to force him into early retirement and vows to wreak bloody vengeance on Lem's killer before losing his badge. 
WYMS learns the barn could be shut down if no improvements are made by the time quarterly crime statistics are released. The season concludes with the breakdown of Mackie and Vendrell's friendship, as Vendrell admits having killed Lem. Vendrell threatens Mackie with revealing their illegal exploits should Mackie attempt to arrest him for Lem's killing, while Vendrell gets in over his head with the Armenians. Season 6 was originally intended to be aired as the second half of Season 5, FX decided to refer to these 10 episodes as Season 6 instead. Season 7 Season 7 premiered on September 2, 2008 and concluded on November 25, 2008, consisting of 13 episodes. Mackie's ex-wife Corinne has learned of his many crimes and agrees to work with Dutch and WYMs to try to send him to prison. Gardocki is also implicated in the process. After a botched attempt by Mackie and Gardocki to have Vendrell killed in a shootout between Mexican and Armenian gangs, Vendrell recruits a local criminal to make a hit on Gardocki, while Vendrell prepares to ambush and kill Mackie. The plot is exposed, and Vendrell goes on the run, along with his wife Mara and son Jackson. Dutch has problems of his own while dealing with a teenaged serial killer. Mackie tries to circumvent his forced retirement by working with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement to bring down a major operator. As part of an immunity deal engineered by ICE, Mackie admits to every crime the strike team has committed and implicates Vendrell and Gardocki enough to send them to jail for life. After learning there is no way to escape prison, Vendrell poisons his pregnant wife and two-year-old son, and then commits suicide just as the police arrive. With Vendrell's death there is no longer any risk of Mackie's being sent to jail. But since Mackie already spilled everything twice it is now too late for Gardocki. Just when Gardocki thinks he is going to go free he is arrested in front of Mackie, at the barn. WYMS reveals the terminal status of her illness to Dutch, who promises to stand by her as a friend. Desperate to escape Mackie, Corinne and the children are shown their new life in the Witness Protection Program. Aceveda stands on the verge of being elected mayor. Meanwhile, Mackie is reassigned to a routine analysis desk job at ICE, where he is loathed by his co-workers, including agent Olivia Murray and ostracized by his fellow cops, who want nothing to do with him now that his many crimes have been exposed. The last moments of the saga depict Mackie retrieving his gun from his desk lockbox and preparing to leave the ice building, presumably following police sirens in the distance. The final credit sequence is interspersed with clips from the show, Under Concrete Blondes, long time ago.